Yeah, I want to express gratitude for the opportunity to bring the uh, indigenous wisdom of my area of uh, Burkina Faso into this mix. Because I believe that there is an importance to it. Uh, as they, they say, uh, in order to go safely into the future, you have to draw from the past. And uh, the culture that I come from, as an elder in it, I've learned this, that everyone is perceived in the village as having arrived there with a gift, that no one has randomly occurred there. And the issue is not only to find out what that gift is, but also to put it to good use. It defined everyone as coming into this world as a giver in order to qualify as a receiver. And so therefore, the approach, such approach is inspired by a cosmology, a perception of the structure of the world or the structure of tribal reality that sees water as a conscious entity that sees water as intimately connected with another conscious entity that we call the earth, and that sees both of them connected to a third entity that is referred to as nature. These three things are at the center of a certain dynamic then, uh, which you're overset with far too many people uh, those we call dagara people live you're, by i don't know how you're going to do this and that is why in the face present. of There's scarcity of water somewhere the first reaction Thanks. is self blame in fact the scarcity of water is seen as a measure of the human tendency to recklessness and therefore, it is a reminder of what kind of things we need to bring back onto our consciousness to work on uh, taking into account that that which has become scarce has become so as a reminder that somehow we human have run out of harmony with something we cannot afford to be disharmonic with. And here's what it goes, uh, what it is. Uh, the perception that in fact, the earth is the symbol the actually the archetype of the mother, and that the water that is carried by the earth is the archetype of that which a mother carried in her womb when she, she is gestating something that is meant to come into this world in a grandiose fashion. In other words, the feminine of the earth is linked to water as the amniotic fluid of the earth. And therefore, its scarcity is blamed on to a certain kind of disrespect of the femininity of Mother Earth, and by extension, perhaps of a certain due respect to the overall feminine in the world. That that which carries the power to generate life and to hold it together must therefore be approached as one of the most sacred things there can ever be. It is uh, possible that such idea comes out of the culture because of the, mat the matrilinearity of the culture itself that looks at the mother as primarily the source of all life and the capacity to hold the continuity of life. And so therefore, the feminine is seen 
from a sacred perspective that disrespect of the feminine can translate into the drying of this gestational sacred environment that is only the task of the feminine to take care of. And so other results, everyone suffers. So in the absence, therefore, and the expression of water scarcity, the first and foremost thing is to go to the earth as the mother and recognize that we've messed up. That somehow we've done something wrong. Furthermore, you don't go to the ancestor, uh, to the earth alone. You go there in the company of the ancestors. Who are the ones that laid out this old wisdom? That at a time when we need verification that village and communities can benefit from continuity, that there are certain special rituals that addresses themselves to the earth as the keeper of that water that provides life, that water inside of which life gestates and eventually occur on dry land. To go there remembering the wisdom that was passed on by those ancestors and expressing that in a sacred fashion to the earth mother who then will guarantee or hold the, the water of life as a response to the humility with which we approach her. See this essentially as a spiritual approach. It is one that comes feeling like uh, it describes a people that knows that the body of the earth that they're walking on has life that is independent, that it is not an inert thing that they're walking on. And therefore, they're, they pay attention to the fact that every time they lift their foot, that body of the earth is there. That mother is there to bring that foot back down. And so as a result, they see the sanctity and the sacredness of the earth. And since the earth is a shrine of the water of life, uh, we've seen that looking at the earth from space, all that water that the earth is holding for us, and yet it can become scarce. Translating into a tendency to make a a commodified approach to it, as if somehow the more we engage our imagination in figuring out how much to produce it, most likely somewhere down the road we will gain mastery of it. What if first we start as human to recognize our tendency to contribute to the production of scarcity? Then to turn around and look like having produced that, it gives us opportunity to think, to figure out how to reverse that. What if figuring out how to reverse that started with a recognition in a sacred way that indeed we did mess up and that we have this kind of propensity? And if at all possible, we would like forgiveness. Forgiveness from our ancestor for having forgotten a piece of wisdom we could not afford to forget and also forgiveness from the earth mother for having forgotten how like giving the feminine is for our communities, for our villages. Having done that, what kind of imagination could become the gift? What kind of Ideas could come in when we begin by exercising this level of humility, thereby demonstrating that it is not everything can be solved cerebrally. Not everything can be solved by the mind. It begins by recognizing that something is amiss and that somehow we want to return to a new relationship with the planets that we're in. And 
because the planet has generated water unbeknown to us and is still keeping it, that perhaps this change of relationship with the earth could translate into a return of the earth's generativity, uh, it, the earth's capacity to hold the gift of life and to give us the opportunity of a new blossom. Ashe.